How we doing Nation? John here. So if you were catching this, the premiere of this video, um, I'm in the chat with you. If you're catching a replay over on Prepper Nation, then guys, I'm probably out of town, out of state actually. I had a writing engagement I've got to be at, and it is what it is, son. Really quickly, for my history folks, uh, will y'all call me uh, John Burgundy or Ron Burgundy? I've, I know that's the Anchorman. I've never actually seen the Anchorman series, but uh, I'll take it as a compliment. I love Will Ferrell, and uh, that's, so that's cool, whatever. My beard. Before we get into it, have y'all noticed my beard is curling up, son? I don't know how to fix this. If I got any beard guys out there, um, I mean, I guess, you know, it's 2021, any bearded women or whatever, but guys, I'm looking at you mainly. <laughs> Do you know how to stop the beard from curling up? I don't know if I got to tie this thing down to a barbell or what's going on. Let's get straight into it. <laughs> I wanted to do some war gaming this week, but I wasn't, at first I wasn't quite sure what kind of war gaming we needed to do here. Because again, it has to tie in with history somehow. And I've been thinking, you know, as, as you folks from Prepper Nation know, I've been talking here and there in the premiere about, are we headed for Civil War 2.0? Are we headed for, uh, you know, the next revolution in this country? And I got to thinking about the collapse of the Soviet Union, the USSR, which I believe happened in 1991, officially. Uh, I believe that was the year where the Soviet Union flag went down and the Russian flag went up uh, at the Kremlin. So, point is, with the USSR, there was really no civil war. There, there was a lot of chaos, and there were definitely revolutionary groups, um, but, but there was like not a full-on assault. Um, militarily speaking it just collapsed you know it just fell apart if you will and so as i'm looking at that and i'm studying that i realize oh my god there are a lot of parallels uh from you know 1991 when the ussr finally collapsed gave out and the usa today folks we may not have a civil war in this country we may not have a full-on revolution in this country like a 1776 or whatever. We may just collapse. And I got to thinking about what would the country look like if that were to happen. Let's war game that, okay? So what I did really quickly, I'm going to pull a map up here. And don't laugh at the map, guys, okay? Because it's very crude. It was thrown together in the 11th hour here. But I think if the United States as we know it collapsed... We would basically become three different uh, countries, if you will, states or countries, whatever you want to consider them. Um, potentially four, but I did, I did the situation here where we have three, okay? To me, this is what it would look like. Um, now, again, in the, in the middle of the country, right above Texas, some of the Midwest, it, it could potentially form a fourth. However, I don't think they have the population to pull that off. I think it would be absorbed by what I'm calling the, and this is a very classy way of putting the TIFAs, the diversified coast. The diversified coast is going to be your ultra liberal Silicon Valley style way of life. You're going to have a lot of Chinese influence in this particular region. You're going to have a lot of Russian influence. Um, you're going to have communist tendencies in the diversified coast. It's all about the machine itself and not necessarily individuals. Okay. In what I'm calling the Texas colonies, all right, the Texas colonies would be your ultra conservative area. All right. Um, now, again, folks, I'm not saying with 100% certainty that this would happen. That's not what wargaming is. Wargaming is what if. So if the country were to splinter, just basically fall apart, um, the diversified coast, that's going to be your, your um, Oregon, 
your Washington State, your California. You can you can start to see it coming together there. Um, Arizona, etc. And then you're going to have Texas, you're going to have Oklahoma, you're going to have that deep, uh, deep south, I guess, red firewall. You can have Florida, you're going to have North South Carolina, Georgia, obviously Tennessee. And then the United States would remain, in my opinion, in the Northeast. Um, you know, Great Lakes, that, that area, New York, D.C. <clears throat> and here's the thing, guys, let me switch this back. When I say collapse, I don't mean the U.S. ceases to exist. Let me use an analogy here, okay, because I love analogies. So this is, uh, this is basically what happened with the USSR. If you look at the USSR, Russia, right, as we know it today, is still basically the USSR. All they did was retract all the way down to Russia and switch flags so the analogy i'm going to use here is a sports league let's say major league baseball okay they've taken on too many teams and now they're bleeding money and sometimes we see sports leagues do this they're bleeding money and they don't know how to recover this money um, so they begin to get rid of the teams that aren't performing well or you know the the teams in the cities where they are just losing money hand over fist. They'll start to retract and they'll start to trim the dead weight. You also see this in corporate America, right? Uh, downsizing. So if a company is not making money and they're losing money, they begin to look at all of the franchises that they have if it's a national deal and they'll start to trim off the stores that just really don't make any sense. I think going back to the map once more, I think the United States would look at this and say, okay, a lot of the West Coast is lost to us. Um, we're not going to be able to recover it. We're not going to be able to make them fall back in line with, with what D.C. wants. And they're going to look at Texas and Oklahoma. They're going to say that's lost to us. We're not going to be able to make them walk the line. So I think the U.S. would actually retract or scale back. Um, and strengthen up. I think it would actually make the United States of America stronger um, in the long run by pulling, pulling the reins back and having their own little stronghold. But what this would do, again, is it would free up the entire South from Texas on over East. Uh, and that would, I think those states would be prone to stick together. Uh, historically, they've always stuck together. Now, you're going to have your holdouts in your cities and things like that. I know Austin, Texas is horrible right now. But by and large, you know, I'm, I'm painting it red here for the Texas colonies. And again, you're going to have your holdouts like in Northern California and Washington State who are conservatives. But by and large, that is going to be just completely overwhelmed um, <clears throat> by socialism and communism. Okay, folks, in order to properly war game. Uh, the situation that we're in right now, we need to understand as much about what's going on around us as we possibly can, okay? Information is key to wargaming, period. And this is no different, okay? So first of all, we need to come to terms with the fact that we are not in a trade war with China. Um, it, it keeps being called a trade war in mainstream media, and President Trump even called it a trade war. I think it's a cold war. All of the signs are there. You know, they're trying to collapse us from within. I think any reasonable person has figured that out by now. They are buying industry up here in the United States. They're buying real estate. Um, they're buying the entertainment industry up here in the United States. Uh, social media, Silicon Valley. They're, they're buying anything they can get their hands on. Here inside the United States, um, they are lobbying our lawmakers. They're trying to change us from within in much the same way that that we tried to do with the USSR. Um, you know, guys, at some point within the next 10 years, and this is indisputable, 
I'm not an economist, but this is indisputable, guys. You can look at the numbers and you can see, you know, a, a village idiot out here somewhere can see what the numbers are showing. And the numbers are showing that within the next 10 years, probably a lot sooner than that, China is going to become the number one economy in the world. And their currency is going to become the standard, you know, the standard front running currency here in the world. And the U.S. dollar is going to take a back seat. And then we're going to free fall from that point forward. What we're seeing, I think, in Wall Street right now, and all of this, all of this adds up to the war gaming here, guys. So Wall Street, I think we're seeing it being purposefully inflated in order for the ultra rich to cash out and get out, right? They inflate the numbers and get people interested in the stock market and then they sell off the stock to the interested parties. They take their money and run. And then we're going to see once everybody, you know, all of the elites are out of the stock market, they're going to watch it crash and burn. Um, we've said this countless times on Prepper Nation. You can't continue to print money and expect good things. You just can't do it. You know, at some point, this, this is where we kind of take our eyes off the Soviet Union for a second and we, we look over at Venezuela. Venezuela is dealing with this right now. Um, in Venezuela, a stack of money this tall, guys, this tall. It doesn't matter what's printed on it. It doesn't matter if it's a dollar or a hundred dollars or whatever in Venezuelan money. It's not worth anything. You can't buy a soft drink with a stack of money this tall over there. But you can eat like a king for a couple of weeks. Three, three square meals a day. Finest meals you can think of with one troy ounce of silver. And that's because when the wheels fell off, people in Venezuela quickly realized the money, what they've considered to be the money is worthless. The actual wealth is in intrinsic value. Things like silver and gold and platinum and good barter items, things like that, whiskey and tobacco. People just don't want the money anymore. Um, and we are going to, I think, reach that point, reach that stage here in the United States. Um, it hasn't gotten that bad yet, but we're all, we're, we are well on our way, folks. Um, if you don't think the economy is in shambles and that they're hiding it, and if you don't think that the banking industry is being as fraudulent as I'm telling you they're being, and you have a decent amount of money in the bank, go, go pull it out. See what kind of reaction you get. You know, got 30000 in the bank, go ahead and go draw it all out. Tell me you want it all in cash. Wait on the reaction. They will... First of all, they'll tell you, well, we don't have that much here today. It would take us a couple of days to get that money together. Okay, I'll take in a couple of days. And then they will ask you why you were pulling the money out. And then they will ask you if you want to roll it over into this or roll it over into this. They do not want you to have the actual money. And the reason is the banks do not have the money. Not everybody's. Okay, if you have 100 people that have invested that kind of money into the bank, they probably have enough for five or 10 of them to pay out. The rest of us floating around in the wild, they've loaned it out to make interest. They don't have your money. And um, as a prepper, this should concern you. This should concern you because not only is money going to be worthless, but for many people, when this crash happens, they're not gonna be able to pull it out of the bank. This is what Venezuela showed us. You know, the people that wanted to draw it out couldn't draw it out. And then the people that did get their hands on it couldn't spend it because nobody wanted it. They're burning it and throwing it out of uh, stacks of it out of the windows, lighting fires with it, you know, lighting a big old Churchill cigar with a stack of Venezuelan money because it's worthless. This is where we are heading as a nation. So, guys, we need to study the fall of the Soviet Union. We need to study what's going on in Venezuela right now because we're seeing the downfall of Venezuela. And we need to understand that the United States is not immune and that we probably are next. 
um, this country is probably next on the chopping block. Unless our lawmakers on both sides of the aisle wake up tomorrow morning and say, you know what, we want this country to be great. We want it to be the way the founding fathers intended. We're going to stick wholeheartedly to the Constitution from here on out. Unless that happens tomorrow morning, it's unavoidable that the United States is eventually going to fall. I don't know if this is going to be five years from now. I don't know if it's going to be 50 years from now. But the downfall is coming. Um, it would almost be better if it was five years from now instead of 50 years of agony because it's only going to be worse from here. And I need you folks to understand that because, again, knowledge is key when we're wargaming. Um, now, we can wargame all day long, every day, on what the country is going to look like afterwards. Um, you know, will it be split up into three countries, 10 countries, 50 different states that all claim statehood? Who knows? Um, but what we do know by studying history is what the downfall is going to look like and how, how people are going to be affected in real life, okay? Paper money, worthless. Once this downfall happens, paper money is worthless. Money that you have in the bank is you're not even going to be able to get it out. Banks are just going to completely fail and that's it. Um, with the Soviet Union and with Venezuela, there was a run on the banking industry. Uh, totally collapsed the banking industry. A lot of people got caught. You know, it's like musical chairs. They got caught without a chair. They couldn't draw their money out. Who do you, who do you call when the government's failing? What phone number do you call to complain on the bank? The bank went under. Now the country's going under. You're just out of your money, right? And at this point, you know, even if you can get your money, you can't spend it because people no longer want it. They don't want currency of the United States if there's no United States. We saw this with Confederate money. So what need do they have? Now is the time to take that extra money and invest it in stuff that people have always wanted. Right? That's precious metal. Silver and gold. Um, platinum if you can afford it. Stuff with intrinsic value. Everybody knows what silver is. Everybody knows what gold is. And they're willing to give you valuable things in return for silver and gold. It's just always been that way, folks. Now is the time. We're always talking about prepping for this and prepping for that. Prepping for the next tornado, earthquake, you know, volcano, wildfire, whatever you want to call it. And these are things that could, could potentially happen, right? Maybe. But what I'm asking you to prep for is the inevitable. I mean, it's the inevitable. These are numbers on a piece of paper and they don't add up. The fall is coming. The, at the very least, this country is going to be slammed into the worst Great Depression that we've ever seen in our lives. And, and that we've seen throughout history, I should say. Because this is going to make um, the first Great Depression look like a day at Disneyland. I mean, really, it, the depression is going to be bad, bad. And at the worst, we're going to see a failed state. The country is no longer going to be the United States of America. So take your pick. Either way, it's bad. And I hate to be that gloomer and doomer, but that's the truth. Get the stuff you need now. Understand that you, you know, the grid's probably going to fail at some point because the power company is no longer going to exist. Um, so you might want a generator. You might want a solar solution. It all comes back to prepping, doesn't it? Look at the people struggling right now in Venezuela. Lining up every single day, praying to God that the country has some kind of a handout for them because they're starving to death. People are literally starving to death. You don't think those people wish they could go back when they had the chance, when the country was rich? And you don't think they w wouldn't invest in freeze-dried foods or a generator or stack silver and gold, something like that? Oh, in a heartbeat. But it's too late for them. It's too late for them. It's not too late for us here in the United States. The people that are listening and watching the signs, the people that see the parallels between Russia 
and um, or excuse me, the Soviet Union and the United States and now the United States and China. The people that see those parallels understand that we're coming to the end of another Cold War and the United States is going to be the loser this time. Um, it, I mean, it just is what it is, folks. Uh, we have the strongest military in the world. The Soviet Union, they had a really strong one as well, and it didn't matter. At the end of the day, you can, if you have enough money now, you can go buy a tank at an auction, a Soviet tank. I have a friend in Arizona that actually has one. <laughs> he runs a channel here on YouTube, as a matter of fact. Bought it at an auction. Um, strongest military in the world is great, as long as the economy's humming along. Once the economy fails, it doesn't matter how many tanks you have. It's over. And I think the United States is over. The United, let me just close with this, okay? The United States that most of us remember, that most of us love, remember the cookouts on 4th of July and, and no masks. I'm saying, the, you know, the cookouts and the fireworks and, uh, you know, the all-day boating trips and, and just normal America. That's over. That ended in 2019 prior to the pandemic. Guys, I don't see us ever returning to that. We are going to be, we're, we're going to have masks and the vax pushed on us now. Um, now they're talking about these green card passports and, um, it's, it's going to be never ending people that, that have newfound control over you. They're never going to let it go. These folks are never going to let it go. And, um, they're making all of, all of the bad decisions, all of the decisions that the Soviet union, economically speaking made that ran them into the grave. We're watching this administration you know, in the White House and this cabinet make the same, make the same mistakes. It's over. Um, but embrace it. I, I don't want to be a gloomer and doomer. I don't want to depress you guys. Embrace it. Maybe it was time for the United States to become something better, right? Um, because the dysfunction in this country, it just wasn't working for the, for the average person anymore. The average taxpayer was getting bent over a table and blasted, son. And, um, you know, so maybe whatever comes next is better. That's it guys. I mean, if I have a message, uh, for you folks, it is to prepare, you know, to study the parallels, study the Soviet union when it was falling, study Venezuela, understand that those same things that happened in both cases are going to happen here in this case in the United States. So you can go ahead and prepare for it. Um, at least you and your family will be taken care of that way. And also to embrace what comes next. Because what comes next may be a lot better than what we had before. You know, I'm sure that, I know this is a weird comparison, but I'm sure that during the English colonies, you know, before we became the United States, I'm sure that when that event happened, a lot of people were scared. They didn't know what the colonies were going to look like afterwards. And they looked pretty daggone good for a long time. So maybe we're headed for much more prosperity for the average American now. Um, this is John with Prepper Nation. Look, I got to wrap it up, folks. Um, I've got to head out of state to a writing deal. Uh, so <laughs> the next few morning premieres that you see on Prepper Nation um, are pre-recorded and unfortunately I will not be in the chat, but I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, and God bless.